Cleveland video. Welcome back to Halfland Performance, Halfland Videos. Uh, if you're a return viewer, thank you so much. Um, if you're not subscribed yet, please go ahead and do that. Hit the notification bell also. Um, we have a few projects going on now. So we have obviously my daily driver, J35 Forge build, which is right here. Um, we're, that's what we're gonna be working on today. Then we have the local customer um, J30 NA build. That's gonna be the 300 wheel horsepower uh, J30 NA build with all of our parts and dynoing. And we should have another dyno coming up next week. So very excited about that. And it should be our runners. Our runners are gonna be the first part to go on. And uh, do keep in mind with that build guys, he is on a stock ECU. So all that is gonna basically show you guys what those J30s can do on a stock ECU. And of course, we're gonna tune. Uh, there's no way you're gonna get past 300 um, on a stock ECU. It's just not gonna happen. Um, usually those motors, those J30s hit around 280 with a full bolt on um, and tune. Uh, actually, 280 is pretty high. Um, we hit, or I hit, 275, 232. And that was the max. And that was when the car had like 150,000 miles, um, which, he has on his car right now so it's a prime motor ready to go um does have a little it's a little on the high side for the mileage but not crazy like if it was 250,000, i would say let's pull the thing uh rehone redo the rings all the bearings and everything but 150k is not bad at all so um we have that so we have the j35 daily we have the j30 uh local customer build and then we also have my race car, which is in the back, and I'm gonna show you guys that, um, show you what I've done so far. Basically, it's just been all interior stripping. Um, pretty much got everything out, got the dash out, wires are just fucking everywhere. It's basically a bare car inside. Um, the only thing I'm struggling with now is, I believe the condenser, it's the middle section for the AC. That thing is a bitch to get out, and the motor's still in, so can't really see all the lines that run into the engine bay, and I, I think that's what's causing the problem, but, Anyways, uh, let's get started on breaking down the J35. Oh, and <laughs> one thing I wanted to add in, for all the people that always comment, they're like, yeah, you fucking suck at videoing. Uh, you need a stabilizer. I have the stabilizer. It's on right now. It's not the most expensive. It's probably one of the fucking cheapest ones you can get. Um, not a pro with it. Still getting used to handling it. But um, if you see the video is less jerky or something, um, then you know why. I did get a stabilizer, guys. I am trying to make the best videos I can, but ultimately, I don't foresee us being a, a million subscriber fucking YouTube channel, man. We are just building J-Series motors, and we just wanna go fast and help our customers go fast um, and document it and show you guys basically how to do it You know, with the right uh, parts and the right setup, you can do it. But anyways, back to the stabilizer. I got one. If it improves it, so be it. Um, I'm not gonna invest thousands of dollars into video equipment. Um, when I have thousands of dollars, I need to go into other projects, other motors, and and so forth so um, hopefully the the video quality is better if it's not fuck you no, just kidding. if it's not uh, I guess you got to deal with it guys all right so obviously guys when I go hand-free uh, the stabilizer is not gonna be uh, in use so you're just gonna have to deal with the, the jerkiness or whatever it is you guys complain about anyways what you see here um, these are our j35 j32 block guards um, they will be going into the motor right here. Um, these are the basic stuff that you need to um, do a quick refresh on a motor. This is a honing tool. Um, if you don't know how to use it, I suggest getting your uh, your block machined or your cylinders honed by a professional machine shop. Um, if you've done it before and you are used to using these, there's a great inexpensive tool uh, or affordable tool um, to use uh, to refresh, how to refresh, refresh the uh, cylinder hone. So you can go ahead and get the cross hatchings with this, um, and then these become very important in regards to uh, piston ring gap and um, measuring uh, piston to wall clearance and so forth. Um, I also have a micrometer, and I will be getting that out. But anyways. Um, our king bearings are in, so these are gonna be our main bearings right here. Um, this is for another local customer motor build um, that we have coming up. Um, 
I will be getting the King main bearing or rod bearings, but also we use Clavette. So um, when we go NA, we usually use uh, the King main, which these are just the generic, not generic, but they're like the entry level OE replacement. As you can see, they're just normal, normal bearings um, where the performance, the performance King bearings are, um, they have like a black coating for, for high wear friction, uh, yeah, wear. Um, it's like a friction reducer. And we, we tend to usually steer those towards like the higher end horsepower, like 700 to 1,000. But even with that said, guys, there's a lot of guys out there that are that horsepower, seven to 1,000 wheel horsepower on stock OEM or OE bearings. So the bearings go a very long way. As long as you're upkeeping the motor, you know, changing the oil, doing all the periodic maintenance, and then probably refreshing every like two seasons, one to two seasons, um, depending on how much you race, um, those OE bearings go a long way. But the reason we like to use King is because their specs and that we found are usually spot on. So uh, with some bearing manufacturers, uh, the specs, they'll have variances, all right? And those variances usually leads to you having to buy, say a standard, which is just the normal uh, bearing size or get like a, a 0.25 millimeter over, um, which would be the oversized bearing. So that, that allows you to, um, it closes that, that gap up. Uh, for lack of a better term um, So the thing is with other manufacturers we found that their specs even their standards are sometimes off And what that will require is you buying uh, an oversized uh, Oversized set of bearings and then a standard set of bearings where King we have found very rarely I think we've only had one bearing that's ever been out of out of spec to what they stated whether it be standard or um, oversized um, we've only had like one bearing out of man probably 15 boxes um which would be about 15 motors of building so anyways um we prefer king clavette is also a very good um bearing manufacturer and we've had a couple more instances where the the measurements weren't exactly um spot on so we had to buy again we had to buy the oversized and the standard um but clavette is also a great great bearing and they also do oe replacements so a lot of the oe replacements are clavette bearings guys so um you can use Clavette, like I said, it, whatever you want to do. The only time we would really use the uh, King um, with the black coating, the performance bearing, is when we're doing like a high, high, like horsepower, high load motor, which would be like seven, eight, nine, a thousand horsepower plus. Um, even, even at 800, it's not required. Cause like I said, guys, um, people have been using OE replacement bearings for a long time and they they go a long way. So let's go ahead and uncover this bad girl All right, so again guys always keep your motors covered always um, Always lightly oil the cylinders and that will keep them from from anything freezing up in the motor um, This is a good power steering pump guys very tight now if the power steering all right So a lot of people get this mixed up if they think if a bearing if a bearing or a pulley spins freely it's a good bearing really what you should have you should have tightness it shouldn't it shouldn't spin freely see that that is a good bearing this one's actually a little looser so it's a little more worn in but that one that one's tight that one's that one's really tight but solid and then this one is also good so we're gonna we're gonna stick with these um, the tensioner is gone so we're gonna have to go ahead and we're gonna move the tensioner off of the Accord and we're gonna put it onto this motor and if you guys don't recall this is a j35 a7 block all right so it is basically identical to a j35 a8 block um, the difference is, is that the J35 A7, they have a VCM. They were like one of the first motors to go VCM. And VCM is variable cylinder management. So what it does, it cuts off the back three cylinders and it only runs on the first uh, front three. And what that does, obviously, is for fuel economy or whatnot. But with that said, I do have a point. Um, the oil, the VTEC solenoid does not match up. So let me show you guys what the VTEC solenoid on a normal motor looks like. And then, so take, take reference to this. You can see that there is no, the, um, the oil pressure go is different. Um, and then there's another sensor on here I'll have to show you guys. So, all right. So, ugh. 
as you can see here, uh, you have this sensor and then you have the pressure sensor over here, or was that the pressure sensor? I forget, but um, this VTEC solenoid obviously is for VTEC, where the other um, the other J35A7, they do not have VTEC. So it, it is missing actually two sensors. So there's one on the back over there, this wire right here, this one, and this one. So it's a three sensor VTEC solenoid. Um, it'll match right up. So all we technically have to do is pull this one off and then put the other one on and that's that. All right, so now back, and you can see here where this this solenoid, this oil passage or whatever you want to call it, um, it's not a true VTEC solenoid because it only has the oil pressure on the back. It's missing the, the front and this sensor right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to pull this off and that will allow us to uh, remember that we need to switch over um, the VTEC solenoid. Second, we are going to go ahead and remove the oil pan and that will allow access to the crank and to the rod caps and then we're also going to remove this is the condenser um, bracket we're going to go ahead and remove the ac condenser bracket and that allows us to get to the um uh the cap the side cap bolts so the great thing about these j series and the reason why they make so much fucking horsepower on a stock block um being aluminum so the 2jz is an iron block they are just a fucking they're a rock basically where we have aluminum blocks so obviously aluminum is a, is a lot softer but it's something that we see that um honda did they went ahead they went to a full four bolt main so the four bolt um the main caps the main cap i'm sorry this is i think i said it was a uh, a rod rod side but it's not it's the main caps it's the crank journal main um the main caps that it's a four bolt main so it not only it not only has two going in like this it has two going into the side right there and that just holds the shit together so much better but uh we're gonna remove that and then next is going to be the um uh the flex plate and i've had a lot of guys so with like our um our lightweight pulley they see that there's no like hex in there to put that special tool guys you you don't need it obviously you can put it and put the car in gear um and that will hold everything together or with this i'll show you what i what i do it's very simple guys just put an extension through here it locks into here and then you can break all of these loose and you can put your flywheel your clutch all that on so i like to do it here i'll, I'll just loosen all these up because when i'm done with the motor building the motor i can put it on the hoist and then set it down and then I can install my, my flywheel, my clutch and everything because this will be loose already. Where if you try to do it off of like a stand, it can be done, but it's it's a lot more, it's a bigger pain in the ass. And then at that point you would have to um, set it on one of these um, like support tabs right in here. Um, the strengthening, strengthening like foot or bridge, or, I don't know exactly what they call it, but I don't like to stress the motor any more than I have to. I'll rather stress the engine stand than the motor, if that makes sense. So if this is an extension going through here, I don't want it to be forcing on the block. I want it to be forcing on the engine stand. So that's that guys, this is what I'm gonna do now. And uh, I'm gonna speed it up so you guys don't have to sit here and watch me do it in real time. And let's get going. Shut, Shut up, up and sit down. down. Well, as you guys saw there, um, don't be an idiot like me. Uh, I thought this motor was dry, but obviously it's not. So <laughs> went to take the uh, the VTEC solenoid or the oil solenoid off. And um, obviously it fucking started leaking oil. So go ahead and drain your oil um, first before anything, guys. And then start working on the bottom end. All right, as you guys can see here, um, the oil is dirty, but it is good. If you look at that, it's a uh, it's a good good oil. So I'm very happy at that about that. It doesn't smell burnt or anything. Um, you can see over here that there was some um, there was some oil coming out here. Not not the fresh oil, but here. So it tells me the VTEC solenoid. Um, that gasket is going out, so we will go ahead and get a new one there. Um, if you look over here, the front main seal, 
there is no oil over there so it is actually very very clean so um that's a good sign but guys if you're rebuilding a motor just fucking replace the gaskets you know eight ten dollars it's not going to break the bank um just go ahead and do it while you're in there go but anyways um as i said before the reason to take off the compressor bracket is uh to get to the side uh main bolts uh, for the four bolt mains so we can actually access all of them now and that's what these bolts are guys and i don't know if i've said this yet but we are working with two manufacturers on pistons uh one is very very well known and you guys will immediately know the name um, once i announce it and the other one not so much but uh they do great work and they have a high silicone alloy piston uh, that we may be looking into um which is about 10 percent stronger than oem and there's guys that have been going you know 800 to a thousand horsepower on oem uh pistons do i recommend that no uh if you if you regap the rings as i've said many many times that's the number one issue with the stock motor is the ring gap um it's very tight so if you go ahead and regap the rings i don't see an issue pushing it to seven eight hundred wheel horsepower as long as you know you have a conservative tune a little riches on the afr or a little fat on the afr and um uh, a little light on the on the uh, timing but a lot of misconception here is uh, i hear from a lot of guys that the j35 um like the a7 the a3 they basically they think that this is a flat piston really it's not it's actually a dished piston so if you look here i don't know how well you guys can see that hopefully you can but this is straight to the block so that's the block deck height so this is the block deck right here and it's straight on there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's an air gap. These pistons are actually slightly, slightly um, dished. And I believe it's like three or four cc, um, shit. Ugh. Three or four cc uh, dish to these pistons. And uh, this motor stock is a 10 to one compression. Um, our heads are already decked and that would bring our compression up to 10 and a half to one. And I think that's, damn near perfect for a daily driver what i'm trying to do uh the j32 that's in the car now is 11.2 to 1 compression on the higher side from what a lot of people think and a lot of that misconception comes from um the oil the older times where gasoline you know we didn't have access to pump e85 even then the 93 pump back then was not what the 93 pump is today it was of lesser quality um so uh but then again you also run into a lot of the additives in uh common day fuels to now today so a lot of people say you know oh it's it's less or whatever but anyways in my opinion the fuel is much better these days especially e85 and the knock resistance so with that said guys um i i've been asked this a couple times too what do you prefer to run on like a turbo motor and for me i prefer to run you know 10 11 to 1. if i was going a straight race motor honestly guys i would probably go 12 12 and a half to 1. but again that is full forged parts fucking forged pistons forged crank our our cranks already forged uh, from the factory but um forged rods so it would be basically be a a belt motor running that compression and i wouldn't have any issues with it because i was running 11 2 to 1 on that motor and guys again don't get it twisted that motor didn't fucking get hurt because of any tuning any building anything like that everything was worked out all the kinks it was running beautifully and uh the stupid oil cooler line literally the oil cooler line ripped it leaked out all the oil and the motor is definitely hurt internally but it was still driving still running i can go start it right now if i wanted to um so the reason i parked is because i didn't want to hurt the motor anymore all the eternals should still be good obviously i'm going to look for hot spots on the crank or or the rods um but if they check out literally 90 percent of that motor is salvageable so i i didn't want to continue to drive it and hurt it because i've just don't want to do that i don't want a, a big expensive heavy paperweight i'm done with that so let's get back to what we we're doing all right so we got the uh compressor bracket off we got the vtex solenoid off 
you can see right here um the gasket felt good it felt uh, it still was elastic or rubbery um wasn't super hard it was still pliable so i'm not sure why it was leaking here um maybe maybe somebody replaced it before they torqued it down too much and then it started seeping through but um that's that again guys gonna go ahead and replace it anyways so it's not a big deal um but right now let me show you what i was talking about with the flex plate so this is how i get it off um again guys an automatic transmission will have a flex plate where a uh, manual transmission will have a flywheel. All right, so what I did here, as you can see, I just went ahead and I stuck an extension through, through the flex plate and it's resting on the engine stand. Then you go ahead and obviously you just go ahead and crack that bitch loose. And you will have to uh, obviously rotate the crank over whenever you're going to the next one and that does not sit flush um so let me get an extension on here <clears throat> because it's not flush long ass extensions get on her All right. there we go So that's it guys so you just do that and then as you need to go up you just pull the extension out rotate the crank over and keep doing that until it comes off or they're loose got all of the uh, uh, <laughs> pressure plate um, not pressure plate fuck torque plate um, flex plate damn all right got all the flex plate bolts um, loosened up as you can see here it's loose so I'm just gonna let it sit there until um, we are done doing what we need to do until the motor is built and then like I said once it's done I get up on the hoist I pull that off put all the uh, clutch flywheel shit on so now um, oh, wanted to touch on this again, guys. I've said it multiple times in other videos, but what I do with this is I always, I always, you see how I broke that loose right there? Usually whenever you tighten this and you use it to rotate the motor over, it will um, lock up that pulley bolt, that crank pulley bolt will sometimes lock up. So what I use is a Loctite, basically an anti-seize. So I just put the anti-seize on the bolt and then that allows you to spin the crank over and not lock it up. You can just really quick go to the reverse to um, loosen it and just a really quick motion, just boom, just jam it like that and it'll it'll crack it loose again. I, I've I learned that along the way, man. I had so many headaches trying to get that bitch off, but that was at the time I didn't have an impact. If you have an impact, just fucking impact it off. But really, this is so much easier. You don't have to get any uh, air tools out or anything. As you can see, guys, I work majority with just fucking hand tools um, and then of course I got the drill so I always break the motor loose um, and assemble with hand tools I don't personally I don't like um, building motors with impacts or disassembling with them with impacts suspension parts motor mount shit like that I'll do that but when it comes to the motor I always break them loose with like a torque bar and a socket, uh, basically handheld tools, guys. And that's how I was always taught to um, assemble and disassemble a motor, because you just don't want to be impacting that motor, stressing it any more than you have to. So that's that. Uh, quick little tip on the uh, crank pulley bolt. See, now it's coming loose, and just tighten it back up, and we're good to go. So, all right, now we are moving on to, actually, I can take the water pump off. Let's see, that's done.
saw there, I end up uh, taking off the water pump anyways. Um, everything looked good, but uh, I will need to get a new gasket, which I knew, um, for the water pump. Because whenever they get old, they do expand. Um, obviously, with the, the water, they soak and they expand. Um, so that, that gasket's no good. I'm just going to get a new one there. Um, as you saw here, I started loosening up all the oil pump uh, bolts. We got one here, there, 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 uh, there, there and i thought there was another one but no that's it but the thing is uh the oil pan so the next thing that has to come off is the oil pan because it connects it locks in um to the oil pump via the oil pan through these bolts right here on this side so let's go ahead and flip the uh the motor over and get this bad boy in here let's go flip this beach over and i did um what I want to say, I did go ahead and um, thread the uh, bolts back in just a little bit so they don't fall out when I do this. And if you can read upside down, J35A7 right there, guys. So, oh, oh shit. <laughs> Still cooling in there. Whatever. I'm just going to let it fly, anyways. There's not going to be a whole lot. There we go. All right. So, oil pan needs to come off. Ugh. Sometimes that gets all flipped up. There we go. All right, so that's that, and I made a mess. What I do need to get, guys, if somebody wants to send me a fucking tray uh, for the fluids, that would be amazing. That would be awesome. You would be the best subscriber in the fucking world. Because uh, I always do this. I always fucking flip it over, and of course, there's always going to be some coolant left in the block. Um, and then, of course, I forgot to fucking drain the oil like an idiot. Because I thought the motor was fucking dry, but it's not. So, anyways that's that guys and then oil pans pretty self-explanatory take all the fucking bolts out um and lift it off I'm not sure if you guys can see this right or well enough but if you look down in here um, right here in the bottom of the oil pan I thought this might have been a shitload of bearing material um, just due to like the bronze almost brownish color but looking closer at it guys um, I think this motor might have had a head gasket going out um because it it's a milky consubstance or consubstance it's a milky consistency um it's not like oil oil so um and it's very it's like dried up so i uh i really think this uh this motor had a oil or had a head gasket going out because of the evidence in here i don't see any bearing material whatsoever i even checked the oil um whenever we drained it and there was nothing in it so uh that's a good sign um definitely the head gasket appears to have been failing and another thing i wanted to add guys is i always leave the bolts in the oil pan because they are different sizes it's not very hard to differentiate which one goes where because as you can see here there's more material for the mating surface of the bolt um but it just makes it way easier you know leave them in there when you're ready to go pull them out because i am going to go ahead and um i'm going to swap the oil pan from the j32a3 over here because it already has the uh oil return the turbo oil return uh bung on it so i don't have to drill this pan retap it or whatever and this is a good pan save it for another build or whatever um so we're good to go i'm just gonna set this aside and then we are going to get moving now we got to remove the uh the windage tray we got to remove the windage tray the oil pickup um, and then we can get to the, uh, the bearings. Uh, as you can 
see here, uh, everything looks pretty damn normal. Actually, it looks in really good shape. Um, what I do here, I start inspecting um, the block, the interior, for any type of cracking. Um, you want to look down here on the walls, um, up close to the um, cylinder bore, or the actual cylinders. And everything here looks really, really good, guys. Um, nothing out of the norm thus far. Everything looks really clean, which is good. Um, you can see the walls are extremely clean. Um, don't see any extreme heating on any of the uh, rod caps. So that's a plus thus far. Um, what we want to do now is go ahead and start um, removing the pistons or the rod caps and then we can bring the pistons out through the bottom. So you don't want to pull them out through the top. You push them through um, and you don't want to bang them. Let me show you All right, guys. So these are torqued on pretty good. If uh, my memory serves me, it's around 30 to 40. Uh, 40 or 50 uh, pound feet so let's go ahead and crack them loose so I always bring the rod cap up to the top to crack them but when you're um, going to knock them out you want the piston to be at uh, basically top dead center for that cylinder so go ahead and crack it loose I go a little at a time a little at a time so you go about 45 degrees at a time is what I do until they free up completely and then you have the ability to spin them all the way off that one's done and that one's done all right so now take the drill back them out all the way all right and sometimes guys uh, these rod caps will not want to come out so what you do you bring the bolts out about halfway and you kind of rock it like that and it will pull pull them out like this oh wow wow i don't know if you guys can see that that is a very very clean bearing dude this bearing's like fucking brand new hmm I don't know if you guys can see that. Eh, there's like slight wear, um, but these are basically brand freaking new, guys. That's a good looking bearing right there. So that, and um, if you're gonna reuse the um, stock rods, just remember they are marked. So there will be basically a number, but these are cracked. These look like they're cracked rods. So what they do from the factory, um, they take the rod and then in order to make it a split rod like this or make the cap they actually break it and they crack it so it's a cracked rod um a cracked end cap rod but you can see it's very specific how it broke so in this case you can just line them up i don't know if you can see that there's like a little ledge here and a little ledge there so you know that is where it lines up but there's also a marking it's hard to see but there's an 11 there's a one one there so that that tells you that it lines up there properly so I said it before guys and I'll say it again, if you do not have a manual, whether it's a Honda OEM manual or even a Hanes, um, I always like to refer to it. Um, this is a great little chart. I've not actually never seen this in the manual. I've never seen it, but I just stumbled across it and it, it shows you all the different uh, type of bearing wear that you'll see. And as you'll notice on here, if you pause it, um, the bearings that I just pulled off are freaking phenomenal. Um, they, they are perfect, literally. Uh, you couldn't ask for a better um, a better wear than that. All right, so back to removing uh, the rod and piston. I think I might have misspoke, guys. Um, like I said, I always bring it to bottom dead center or bring the main cap all the way up to you, which would technically be the bottom of the block. And this is the correct route. Um, you you get the the rod off, you get the rod uh, the cap off, and always lay it out in the manner you're taking it out. And then from here, you do not want to hit it at all, guys. You just want to push on it. And again, you want the piston to be at bottom dead center or the crank journal all the way up to you, which would be bottom dead center. All right, so give it a little push and I can feel it start coming out already. So we just push. All right, kind of got out of my hand there for a second. Bring the journal up and then 
keep pushing guys and it will start to pop out right so at this point um we have the piston almost all the way out and if you need to you can rotate the crank being sure not to hit the rod all right just to get enough room for you to actually get in there and push the thing all the way down because right now i'm having sh i'm struggling a little bit to get this bad boy out it's past the first initial um i think two yeah two piston rings so it's not going to go back in so just be like i said before guys be mindful not to hit you don't want to hit that journal you don't want to affect this journal on this on this crank so all go. right so here you go just keep pushing guys and once you get enough room you can actually start pulling on the piston a little bit and there we go whoop popped right on out that was a pain i think it might have been hydro locked a little bit with oil to be honest with you i've never had that much issues so looking at the bearing let's look at this side guys these bearings look amazing look at that beautiful cross hatching still on the uh, rod side no. if you look here guys um, there is a little spot that it looks like some debris went through I don't know if you could see it two little notches right there looks like debris went through you got a third you got a little bit of scraping so not terrible guys this isn't bad at all like this is I would be very confident if it was just an NA motor you know with full bolt on easily run another hundred thousand two hundred thousand miles with this bearing it's a, the bearings in great shape i don't see anything any issues with it outside a few uh debris scrapings and that's it so i'm gonna go ahead i'm gonna clean it off and i'm gonna put the bearing back with its mate yeah it looks really good looks really good so anyways and then to do this guys very easy you just line the tangs up so you got tang and tang and you just kind of walk it in there push it down and set it down in there then you make sure they're even and then like I said before you're gonna have two marks I don't know if you can see them or not where this side has none this side has two faint white lines I don't know if you can see it but like I said before they are cracked so if you could see that little ridge right there that crack coincides to that so you just line them up set them there right there and now you can see that way better you see how they're cracked these are cracked rods these are actually pretty fucking beefy guys actually let me pull my other this is a j32 a3 it's a pretty beefy fucking rod this is a j35 so this is a j35 z8 guys and look at this j35 a7 rod look how much beefier it is that's a beefy fucking rod guys wow wow so if i had to say which rod i would go with i would go with uh i would go with the fucking um j35 a7 oh, guys so this is very interesting if you look at it this is j35 a7 on this side this is j35 z8 now look at the difference between those two look at that you can literally fit the z8 rod in between the j35 a7 look at the look at the bottom of the rod look how much beefier it is guys that's very very interesting huh i need to get a uh, j35 a8 and see how they compare because this is way beefier than this which is very surprising i wonder if this is the same rod in the j35 a8 because because we know that the j35 a8s um or the tls rods are some of the strongest rods but it appears that these are fucking beefy guys i mean for an oem rod that's pretty fucking beefy all right so looking at these journal guys they look really really good um i may still get it micro polished honestly um for what i'm trying to do i'm just gonna go ahead pull the crank and have it micro polished um at a local shop by us who is actually a, a basically a, a countrywide or nationwide uh renowned um crank uh 
machinists basically uh they they machine a shitload of motorcycle parts and i've had my crank machine uh or polished and machined and specced out by them before um but i'll do the specking because i have all i have all the measurements and everything to make sure it's well within spec um but i will get those journals micro polished just to be safe but looking at it it looks really really good so next thing we're gonna do we're gonna move on to cylinder uh what is a cylinder number it's six cylinder number three so it's six three um five two four one yeah <laughs> that's it it's a little confusing when the fucking motor is upside down and spin the wrong way but that that's accurate so let's go ahead and move on to the next one you want to bring the piston i don't know if you can see it there bring the piston all the way to top dead center which is or bottom dead center i'm sorry which is right there all right and once again guys we are going to go ahead and we are just going to crack what did i do with the what did i do with it all right see I'm starting to lose tools so it's shit. the same process guys go 45 45 45 45 and just keep doing it and they are now loose and just keep motoring along guys take a look at that so I mean you got slight wear but this is a hundred and eighteen thousand mile motor and this is what I would like to see in a motor that age I don't know if you can see it. Very, very good. These bearings are very nice. All right, so this one came out way easier. I forgot to hit <laughs> the record button, guys. Sorry. There we go. And again, guys. Again, we got very, very good looking bearings. This one has slightly more wear. You can see that center line through there. But it looks good definitely on this side you can see the the more wear there hopefully you guys can see that not sure where it's aimed so like i said still it's still a really good bearing but anyways guys i don't want to bore you i'm probably gonna leave the video off here oh you know what i forgot to show you the track car let me go ahead and do that real quick give you guys an update all right guys so it's been a little bit since i showed you the track car um didn't never showed you the tarp um I put a little tarp here and it just did not do very good literally the first day it was up the first day it was up we had the worst freaking windstorm ever but hopefully you guys can see this um we got all the trunk and everything out uh it's a little dark sorry but guys we got everything stripped out the seats are gone um the back we got the side panels off hold on let me see if i can fix this all right that's a little better but this is what we got going so um got these side panels out you can't still can't see it trunk is absolutely gone speakers are out um let's see here headliner is out uh doors are there and i think i'm going to cut the doors um but still leave some space for the uh the windows to to go there and this is the front as you can see that is the ac i believe it's the condenser um or it's the blower box i, I forget um but anyways that's all gone and the cross section bar is out i will be putting that back in as it's a great uh stabilizer or uh yeah i guess stabilizer um for the car um for the structural integrity because it's actually uh, those two pillars right there it's actually supporting them but um that is the mess right here <laughs> it's just a cluster of fucking wires so i gotta go through them and figure out what we're gonna do but i'm pretty sure i'm gonna run uh am infinity i've been looking at haltech uh fuel tech um Honda, which is just not gonna work man we've i've contacted Honda along with a bunch of other people um really i could get by i like Honda, and i could get by um 
as long as I had traction control, but they don't want to implement traction control. So being this car is gonna be 800,000 horsepower, maybe even a thousand horsepower plus, uh, that traction control is gonna come in very fucking handy. And they just basically, they refuse to, uh, to do it. So the next one was AEM, AEM Infinity. They actually have a direct plug and play ECU for our cars. So it plugs right in. Obviously, um, if you are a daily driver, you're not gonna want that because you're gonna lose radio, windows, all that shit. Um, unless you can figure out how to program in the, the CAM features because it is a CAM protocol system and the um, AC and all that shit runs off a can. So if you can figure out how to do that, good for you. I am not that fucking guy. I am not a wizard at um, wiring and setting up ECUs and shit. I know how to do the basics and I know how to get it running and I know how to tune, but when it comes to specific wiring, uh, the AEM is going to be a learning curve for me. Um, just because I, I've never really had to do it. I've done mostly Honda at it and K-Tuner and that was it, or uh, K-Pro. K-Pro, uh, K-Tuner, and also Honda. That's the majority of what I've, I've worked with in regards to J-Series motors. I've tuned like two cars on AEM. Very, It's a very easy way because it's a VE, uh, which is volumetric efficiency. And so basically once you get those tables set up, everything is pretty easy. You really don't have to retune even after modding because you already know what the, the VE of the motor is. Very slight adjustments. Where Honda, you know, you do a modification, you got to you have to retune the whole thing because everything is different. The fueling is going to be different, so you got to adjust that. So, anyways, that's that, guys. Um, like I said, AEM, go with AEM Infinity if you're doing race car. Um, if you're still a street car, uh, do Honda. Like, my street car will probably always be fucking Honda because obviously I need AC, I need windows, um, I need radio, I need all that good shit. But that's that guys, let's get back to the motor. All right guys, and basically from here forward, it's just gonna be the same stuff. Um, I'm actually gonna leave the motor as is right here, uh, just because um, I want to test fit our rods, which I did not, I did not mention to you guys. Um, I got word that our rods are complete. Our 1000 horsepower J35 rods are complete and they are shipping. So we should have them by next week which is why I wanted to get this video out. Um, I wanna get the rods um, test fitted on here just to be sure. And then of course, um, all the group buy customers that ordered initially, um, their rods are going out and then we will have our rods available. And um, for all six, thousand rated at thousand, wheel, uh, thousand horsepower, not wheel horsepower, crank motor horsepower. So a thousand horsepower, um, they come with our Hafferland one year uh, warranty and guarantee. So you guys rest assured, nothing's gonna happen. If it does, you know, we'll replace it for free. Um, so that's that. And best of all guys, it's gonna be 645 for the full set. Um, ARP equivalent 2000 hardware, um, which is rated to, I think like 15, 1600 horsepower. So our, our bolts are actually rated higher than our rod. So you don't have to worry there. Um, and honestly, our rods could probably be pushed a little further than that, but that's what we're going to warranty them at is a thousand. So anyways, guys, uh, stay tuned for that. And also stay tuned for this J35 build. As soon as we get the rods in, I'm going to make another video for you guys. And, uh, we should have the diamond video coming up next week and then of course the track car which I just showed you uh, it's coming together I just got to get that AC shit out and then I can start reassembling uh, I can start finishing up the uh, the cross section bar for the dash the dash bar um, I can start cutting that up a little bit and I'm aiming I would like to see sub 3,000 pound uh, car when done with all the parts um, wheels tires basically curb weight basically ready to race I would like to see sub 3,000 if I could uh, 80 or 2800 would be fucking awesome um, that thing should absolutely fly at that rate but um, that's that guys I uh, hope this video was informational or informative and um, I hope you get something out of it like I said before uh, please like sub uh, if you're already subscribed please go ahead hit that notification bell so you can be alerted to um, any any new videos because we I am kind of sporadic working half lane performance then I work my nine to five then I have this build uh, family all that shit so my videos are kind of sporadic and I am gonna work on trying to get one video out a week at least um, but I just don't like 
uh, fluff content, if you know what I mean. I don't like a video just to make a video like some YouTubers. They'll, they'll just make a video about fucking anything. Oh, I went to the store. That's not me. If I'm not working on something or there's something I can't show you guys that will help you, I'm probably not going to make a video. So please bear with me, guys. Uh, I am a, just a normal fucking guy trying to make a, a business out of